grab some pot holders the next time you're at the dollar store. I picked up three sets of pot holders the last time I was at the dollar store, and I have a few projects I want to make with them. First up, I want to use this pretty blue one, but I don't need the loop at the top. I'm going to use my seam rippers to remove the thread until the loop is undone. I don't want to cut off this long piece of trim, so I'm going to fold it over and use a little hot glue to hold it in place. Now I want to fold this into a cone shape. I'm going to go from the corner to corner the long way so that my cone can be a little bit larger. I'm going to roll over the bottom two corners until they create a cone, leaving the top part open. I want to add a little bit of trim, so I'm going to use this great plaid ribbon that I have. I can now slip in a set of silverware and they're going to fit perfectly. This makes my place settings look so much prettier when it's time for company. I want to use this great feather pot holder and add a button to start. To find the spot where I need the button, I folded the pot holder over and brought the loop to the front. Now I know exactly where I need to place the button. With the button in place, I want to add some pouches inside so that I can store little things in them. I'm going to use clear sandwich bags and my hot glue gun. I want the bags to open on either end, so I'm running a line of hot glue down the center of the pot holder, and now I can line up the bag with the end and then stick it right down into the glue. After the glue is dried, I can trim off the bottom of the bag and it's still going to stay sealed because of that line of hot glue. I'm going to add three more bags the same way so that I have two bags opening at each end of the pot holder. To finish off the center where that glue is, I'm going to use a strip of burlap ribbon to just cover it up. I'm going to make this one into a little sewing kit, but there are so many things that I could use this for. It's perfect really at home or for when I travel. I'm starting by removing the loop and then I'm going to glue it into the cone shape. I'm going to use a little bit of lace to trim this one up. I can hold it in place with the hot glue and then I'm just going to tuck the ends under the opening around the top and around the back. Since I want to hang this cone, I'm going to use the same lace to make a little loop on the back. Now I can slip in my scissors and the other things that I use daily. This is the perfect little place to get these things off my counter and hung up neatly where I can easily get to them. For my last project, I'm going to make one more thing out of the pot holders. To start off, I've got this dish towel and I want to add a little dab of glue to the fold line in the middle. With the towel glued, I'm going to fold over the pot holder and glue the fold of the pot holder to the fold of the towel. You can also see that I've already added a button the same way I did for the last project. Once this glue has dried, it's that easy and it's ready to hang. I love this type of towel. They're so great to have in the kitchen and are so handy. I hope these projects have inspired you to grab some pot holders and see what you can do with them as well. The possibilities really are endless. Run to the dollar store and go and grab a glass bottle. We are going to start off this craft with a cleaned out plastic bottle. So now we're going to line this up with the bottle. Go and draw a circle for where this is going to go and fit. Go and cut it out, put your glass into the hole. Now we're going to go and paint our bottle. Let it dry. Let's go and get these fake pearls and start to string them with some pipe cleaner, but leave one end unbended. We're going to go and poke some holes into our plastic bottle. Take the pipe cleaner, stick it in there, take the other pieces, go and stick them in as well. Hot glue where it meets with the pipe cleaner and also the bottle. Got some fairy lights and we're going to go and stick them into where we have the center hole. Now let's take this base here, stick it in place. I am using cotton for this. Now let's go and glue these down. Use your fingers to go and poof it out. Go and use a fork to really go and poof it out even more. This cloud lamp is sure to light up any room, is so much fun to go and make, and is upcycled. Let's start with a plastic bottle. Slowly cut off the bottom part. I am going to follow the natural ridges of the bottom of the bottle and just round the edges. I'm going to grab a small tea light and just hold that plastic near the flame. What it's going to do is slightly melt the petals, making them look like natural petals. The next step is to paint these. Once the paint is dry, I'm going to punch a hole. Then I'm just going to use some hot glue to to attach the two pieces together. Tie some string through that hole and this makes a beautiful sun catcher in my window. I'm gonna take these two empty plastic water bottles and I'm gonna remove the caps. I don't need those. And I'm gonna take a sharp instrument. This is just a crafting tool and I'm just gonna poke a hole into the plastic water bottle and flip it over and do one on the other side. Then I'm gonna take a yarn needle and using some embroidery thread and then I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to push it through one of the holes and pull it back out the other hole and then 
on the same string. I'm gonna do it again through the other bottle. And now I have both these water bottles on the same line of string. This old shelf that I had and I painted it and then I just let that dry. So I came in with these scrap two by four pieces. Once all my pieces were dry, I placed my two by fours on top. Holding it, I flipped it over and then from the back side using a drill, I drilled in two inch screws. And then I came in with these uh, brackets. Take these water bottles and I'm gonna attach the string to the top of my brackets. So I did cut out a decal with my Cricut cutting machine and we are going to show Zoe how this works. And so all she has to do is kind of come over and bite the water bottles or flip them and try and get the treats out. Go ahead and remove the lid and I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of cut down, take some apple cider vinegar and I'm gonna pour that inside. Take the lid and place it upside down. So I've just got some good old painter's tape. I'm just going to tape these together and the flies will go in here to find the apple cider vinegar. It's a bug trap. Just have an empty water bottle, add just water to it. This is a punch and all I'm gonna do is just poke random holes into the lid and I'm gonna screw it on to the top. So I've made myself an indoor watering can or you could use this outside on your porch too. Another place you can use the water bottles is to use it as a self-watering system so that you don't have to worry about watering them every day. So you're going to need two boxes. Now we're going to cut off all of the extra little cardboard pieces, take a pair of jeans that are washed and lay them out. We're going to cut off both of the legs. After that is cut, we're going to go and measure the fabric that's going inside. After those are cut out, let's put some glue in the inner portion. You can use either hot glue or some E6000 glue. And after you have each section glued down, go and cut the corners and then secure it at the sides. So I'm measuring this up now and I'm seeing how much material this is going to go and cover. But at the edge here, I'm going and gluing it down. Now I'm putting some glue onto the box. Let's go and take this and put it down. Go and take off any extra material, but do leave a small amount on the bottom so you can glue this to the bottom. And now let's go and finish off the rest of the box. And while that dries, we're going to go and cut off some of these little tiny pieces for the belt loop, glue these onto the sides. Now we can go and write on the box. Let's go and fill this toys box with some cat toys and it fits perfectly underneath my cat's scratching post. For my other box, I'm going to use it to go and organize my bathroom closet. I took this fleecy fabric softener plastic container and then using an X-Acto knife, I just cut off the top portion. Next, I'm going to take some craft paper. I'm scrunching it up to create like a really rough texture and then I'm gonna tape it on where I need tape to hold in place and just cut out my handle and then wrapping that again in masking tape. When I'm done with this, I'm gonna create my paper mache and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rip the envelopes up into tiny little pieces. Then I'm gonna add just a little bit of water before I turn on my blender. So I lay out the Mod Podge and then I just grab a handful of the slurry and I just spread it around onto my plastic container. I let it set for a full day and this is my finished vase here. Start with one produce bag and roll it in on itself. Continue to do the same with the three other produce bags. Secure the outer net to one of the metal clasps on the end of the netting. Now you have a DIY scrub daddy for tough dishes. CDs? I'll bet you've got a box of them stored somewhere. Using a free online template or drawing freehand, draw the shape of two butterflies of the exact same shape and size onto a piece of cardboard. Also, draw and cut a strip of cardboard that is about one inch in width and is long enough to completely wrap around your butterfly. Bend and curve the strip as needed and tape on the inside edge of the butterfly. Take the second butterfly cutout and tape it to the top of the cardboard strip. Once that edge is taped, tape the outer edge of the other side as well. Combine a one-to-one -one mixture of flour and water and then add additional water to get the glue consistency that you want. Cut or tear strips of newspaper and begin to paper mache the outside of the butterfly box. Once dry, spray paint the paper mache butterfly with a metallic silver paint and let that dry. Grab your protective eyeglasses, safety first, and a pair of scissors. Begin to cut the CDs into small squares. Because they soaked in the warm water, cutting them will be slightly easier. Using a hot glue gun, begin to glue the square tiles to the butterfly. Once you have the front and back done, glue tiles to the sides. You can now set your new butterfly on a shelf or table or hang it from a ceiling or from a tree in your yard. 
First, we're gonna repurpose a one gallon glass pickle jar, and then we have some decorative nautical rope. I'm measuring out vertical strips. Now, once I get all of my strips cut, I'm gonna start using my glue gun to attach them on the side of the jar. And all I'm doing is I'm evenly spacing these out, and then I'll go in the middle of those sections and put a piece of rope, and then I'll do that, continue on until all eight. And I'm just gonna start somewhere and kind of glue in a few places as I'm wrapping around, and then I'll glue the other two, and it end up being a stack of three, just to give it a finished look. It would look good staged and styled for many different seasons. Take an X-Acto knife and remove the lid flaps. Take hemp rope and a hot glue gun to begin wrapping the rope around the box. Take twine and begin gluing it to the perimeter of the bottom of the box. Take balsa wood oval or circle shapes and paint them with black paint. Print words to be displayed on the side of the box. Cut them out and use pencil to cover the back of the paper. Then trace the font on the balsa wood. Use a chalkboard pen or a white paint pen to cover the pencil traced font. Use a hot glue gun to attach the labels to the side of the box. There you have it, an inexpensive way to create your own pantry storage for your home for less than $10.